Hello, this is the, <laughs> I can't believe I'm actually doing it. Well, it's come to this. This is the RPG Pundit, the final boss at Internet Shitlords. And today, I am reviewing The Book of Antithesis by Joe Bittman, <laughs> published by Lamentations of the Flame Princess. I really didn't want to do this, but here we are. Okay, <laughs> so I was sent a bunch of these books by uh, by James Raggi, uh, his latest Lamentations products. Uh, he published, I think, 10 of them this year. And of them all, he keeps insisting the Book of Antithesis has been his best seller. Um, I'm not sure why, but <laughs> we're going to speculate about that as well as other things. Now, I am maybe particularly uh, qualified to, to review this book, both as an RPG product and, let's say, as, a, as an occult product, right? Because I am, of course, one of the foremost RPG designers of the OSR, but I'm also an occultist and uh, I'm very familiar with the subject matter. Um, so I wrote, for example, The Invisible College, which is uh, very thick, as you can see, 432-page RPG, um, OSR, obviously, for role-playing magicians in a modern setting in a like context of occult conspiracies where all of the magic here is inspired by real occult ideas and theories it's 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 actually talking it explains them as they are seen by modern occultism right so it's not gobbledygook it's not made up spells or something like that it's it's the type of magic that real magicians make in the 20th and 21st centuries um that said all the magic in there is happening in the game. You're rolling dice, right? You're not buying the Invisible College might teach you a few things you didn't know about how people in the 21st century do magic, but it won't teach you how to do that magic. You won't learn any, you know, you won't get any inkling of how to actually do it yourself from this book, right? It's not a book that's meant to turn you into a magician. It's just a an RPG that's where you're meant to play you know, wizards in the in the 21st century engaged in a secret occult conspiracy war with other wizards, okay? <laughs> and it, I think it's a pretty damn good book. The Book of Antitheses is not that. The Book of Antitheses ha is promoted as a book about using real magic to DM, Right to using magic in your RPGs, but not like in the setting or in the mechanics, but actually using the techniques of magic, particularly as a dungeon master. Okay, so this is what the book Antithesis purports to do, and um, that's really only half of the book. I'll, I'll get into what the other half is because apparently, you know, I, I'm guessing that Job has put all of his occult knowledge into this product and <laughs> you can only manage about half of a, uh, what is this? How many pages? Uh, half of a 160 page book. So about 80 pages or so uh, was what he could muster. Um, which is, by the way, the, the uh, this is a, a kind of a weird um, mix because the second half is a very, it's it's I was I was about to say it's a very typical lamentate late stage lamentations adventure you know it's set in the 1630s it's got Germans in it all kinds of stuff like that right but um the the that, that what what I'm missing in that description is that it's also I think going out of its way to try to be the most shocking and offensive edge lordy type of adventure you could ever imagine okay. Um, I have to comment before I continue that Joe Bittman is an associate of mine. He's a co-host on uh, Inappropriate Characters. Um, we haven't had any commercial dealings together apart from Inappropriate Characters, but uh, I just wanted to be clear for absolute transparency. However, I think it's going to be very obvious by the end of this video that uh, my personal connection to Job is not going to affect my ability to be critical of this book. <laughs> So comparing it here for size, it's 160 pages. You know, it's uh, roughly in that same dimension as my um, smaller uh, Spectre Press books. Um, it has 
this hole on the in the cover, which uh, there's an explanation about that hole in the book that it's you know I'm pretty sure it's its purpose is that it's actually a glory hole. <laughs> you know, it's Satan's glory hole. <laughs> so um, maybe the hole is the whole reason why the book is selling so well. So the book opens here with a statement about how uh, your soul will be damned just for having opened these pages. Then it quotes the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trimagistus, which will not really end up being applied much in the rest of the book. Um, and uh, then in the foreword, it talks about, it's the foreword written by Job himself, or is that someone else who's doing the foreword? I should probably check that out. Oh, no, it's uh, J.F. Martell. Okay. So he says, all his ritual, all his play, um, you know, Leela, the, the play of life. Um, and I mean, that's fine. Uh, but there's ways to do magic and there's ways to do magic, right? And there's ways, I would say there's ways to do magic in RPGs and there's ways to do magic in RPGs. Going around trying to like actively be casting spells as part of your DMing. Like you remember that episode of, of King of the Hill where they go to a Christian rock concert and Hank Hill says, you're not making, you're not making Christianity better. You're just making rock and roll worse. Right. Um, that's pretty much what happens if you're like, I'm going to mix real occultism with Dungeons and Dragons, you know, like you're not making Dungeons and Dragons better. You're just making occultism worse. Um, like uh, it's certainly a point that in in Dungeons and Dragons in RPGs rather um you have elements of what you do where you you're connecting because part of of magic involves the world of symbols and images the 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 veil between the world of of the manifest and the world of the unmanifest right so when you can go into the unmanifest as to say into the abstract of speech and of symbol. And out of that, you create a world and populate it with people who are alive. And if you get to a point where you do that and collectively with other players, so that every, everybody, all the players are, are gradually immersing themselves until they become someone who they normally aren't. That is to say the player character. And that character takes on a life of its own and the NPCs of the world gain in depth until they become alive and have their own ideas and agendas outside of what the DM might imagine them to do. When you've accomplished that, you've accomplished a pretty major act of magic without a doubt, right? You've created a world. It's a, it's a phantasm world. You could say from the point of view of our, of our physical world, but that doesn't matter very much. You know, some uh, imaginary worlds have had enormous impact on our manifested material plane. So, um, you know, that's magic, but it doesn't need this stuff, you know, like all, where you're going to be like, uh, he, he's trying to teach you to do uh, different practices like using a focus object and um, giving your camp, your game world a true name. Um, using a, a stylus to direct energy. Um, tarot cards <laughs> that that's just lazy at that point <laughs> then it's like an initiation ceremony that you should do to uh, become an initiate of I guess Bitman's patented RPG magic <laughs> um, astral travel um, and I mean yeah, okay, like you could say, well, let's do astral traveling and then, you know, invoke the astral plane into uh, into the RPG. But why do you need to do that? If you, if you run the RPG long enough, that happens automatically, right? You're, being, you're engaging in a kind of astral travel if you end up entering into a full immersion state. And things start to happen that, that are unexpected, you know? Um, banishing like oh yeah you gotta do a banishing ritual before you start your rpg session 
Uh, anyways, I've, it's pretty obvious to me that, uh, first of all, let, let me comment that the mixture of what Job's style of magic is, is also a, a big mishmash of a combination of chaos, modern chaos magic, which is like this hip magic that started in the 1970s and is basically about forgoing the kind of traditional rules of, of hermetic magic. Um, with some folk influences added in, that's not surprising. A lot of like chaos magic has now descended back into the <laughs> the the brutishness of folk magic. Um, ironically, that probably makes it work better because at least folk magic has the weight of paradigm behind it. It, it actually, you know, like doing stuff that that ancestors have done for hundreds of years or something like that is um, is going to have more symbolic force than saying, oh, you could invoke anything. You know, you could invoke Mickey Mouse. You know, stupid chaos magicians. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's a combination of those things plus this kind of super performative Satanism that I don't know if that's like Job's actual, part of Job's actual practice or if he's just done that for the sake of this being Lamentations of the Flame Princess so to be like an edgelord, right? Um, English gematria, which is nonsense. There's always they've always tried to do an English gematria, and nobody's ever managed it in a way that is credible. Um, if you want to do gematria, learn Hebrew. Um, dice magic, okay, yes. I, I, the 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 fact that the dice are connected to the Platonic solids and the five elements, I'll grant you that that's that's an obvious one, right? But. Uh, uh, it's you know if you've got magical instruments that we use in the magic of RPGs, it's dice. That's it. That's all you need. You know, demon summoning. You know, it's like. Um, let me put it this way: this this book. It's also got a whole shitload of like secret magical details, um, which are again meant to be edgy and for the people that are in the in the in group, you know, um, I'm not going to spoiler any of them, but, uh, they're not that they're, they're, I'm not that impressed by them anyways. Right. So that's where it gets to 70 up to page 69. Interesting choice is, <laughs> is the magic part. Right. And then after that, it goes into the adventure. Uh, what I'm going to say about the, the magic part, right. Is that, um, I do not find it a particularly um, sophisticated form of, of magic um, because it's chaos magic, you know, and, and it's, that's just most, most of chaos magic is just performative poserism, you know, like cosplay and cheap tricks. Um, they're, they're, and they are, they're cheap tricks. That's the thing about chaos magic. It's easy to teach. I mean, you couldn't actually make you do ceremonial magic because you'd need a gigantic book to learn that. And you'd need months of practice because that's real magic. Right. But uh, chaos magic is full of little tricks that a person can do in their life that, that are relatively easy to do that rel don't have any like large scale transformative effects of your consciousness, but that, that are, that they work, right. Some of them. Um, and that, you know, surrounded by a whole bunch of edgy style that is completely unnecessary. And by a bunch of, uh, nonsense about like being rebels, you know, <laughs> like, which is just, just kind of infantile, you know? Um, I, I really don't understand. I mean, I could get that people might buy this out of curiosity. I don't understand where they're going to like, what, what I, I don't see how people are going to like find any of this useful. Let me put it that way. I'm sorry, Joe, but that's, that's my own judgment on this, man. Um, the adventure itself is set up um, basically as a um, standard Lamentations adventure. It's actually a sequel to Better Than Any Man, which was honestly one of the best Lamentations adventures that I've ever seen. Um, this one, though, I mean, like... <laughs> It's not bad. There's elements of it that are that are historically accurate, and so I have to kind of like that. I'm I'm obliged to the map, the city. Um, 
some good some good details some good i mean okay art i mean there's a lot of very offensive art in this book though like if you're if you're worried about nudity or so like if the, this is not a book you'd want your little kid to open and, and end up <laughs> looking at right let's put it that way um starts talking about Jungianism as the persona of the characters i mean like again this is silliness um but uh you know it's got a cast of weird characters and the the plot is this plot about a cult that has um basically literally the devil himself right there he is 666 hit points um is engaged in a cult in this place during the wars of religion of course it's always important in <laughs> in late stage lamentations um and uh, then there's a bunch of stuff that's going on in the area and it's not set up as a random table because you're supposed to do some kind of magic thing to decide which one of them what, what things you do um and uh like it, it's it's got all kinds of stuff that is meant to be as offensive as possible or as shocking as possible up to the gates of hell and it's it features i'm not gonna i guess i shouldn't be looking up the the image but uh it it features uh the the cult creating um these incubus implanted pregnant soulless cannibal children okay <laughs> and uh uh, and you know, like again, it, it, this book is the, the adventure is trying to be as offensively edgy as imaginable. You know, like as as much as you can get, even in Lamentations, I think. Um, and and I'm not offended by that. I just find it lame. <laughs> like it's it. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, then there's the stats on the book Lamentations itself, which is basically a rip off of like the Goetia sort of thing. Um, if you want to actually look at the Goetia, check out the Invisible College. Uh, of course, that's not the real Goetia. It won't teach you real Goetic magic, but you'll learn about what the real Goetia had in it and stuff that it, you know, what, what it was really about rather than this kind of pseudo thing. Um, the monsters. And is there anything after that that I need to really look at? Oh, yeah, there's like a, at the very back. Oh, there's cannibal children. Um, the very back of the thing, Stolas, Prince of Hell, there is a demonic physiognomy chapter, right, which has, I should have probably grabbed Cults of Chaos for this because, uh, you know, um, medieval demons or, you know, early modern demons too, but ma mainly medieval. This is like, ironically, they're using something that was already going out of style by the time of the that that lamentations is now said and is you know they have they're always like these composite creatures right a mix of different heads and bodies of course there has to be one of penises there but it's just just fucking ridiculous right um i don't know what i'm gonna do about this video but, uh all right so uh, well it's all just illustrate illustrative there's no actual you know, no real images here. Um, so ultimately, I'm not that impressed with this book, right? <laughs> it's uh, I have a lot of trouble figuring out how much of it is Job actually being serious about his beliefs and how much of it is him being edgy and or taking the piss as the as the British say, right? Basically making fun of the people that are that are that are reading this and taking it seriously it's it's hard to tell and that is maybe the nicest thing i can say about this book right is that at the very least you can't be sure how much of it is being done ironically and you know as a as a joke um in terms of utility i find very little for it you know i do find it's it's edginess it's like constant edginess to be just so so ridiculous it's very funny to me because like of the three of us in inappropriate characters, me, Job, and Venger Satanis, right? Venger and Job are try to be so much more edgy with their magic, right? Um, they're they're both obviously less um, experienced in it and have less 
less actual training than I do, right? Um, but then also, like, that's not the funny part. The funny part is they're, they're super edgy with their magic. Right? Venger is the high priest of Cthulhu and Job wrote the Book of Antithesis and stuff, right? But, like, in their regular lives, they're, like, such average guys compared to, like, the life I lead, you know? <laughs> like, they're, they're, like, yeah, yeah, they both have families. They live in, you know, suburbs and, you know, now Florida in Job's case or Wisconsin and in, in uh uh in Avengers, they have day jobs kids you know they're uh they're they're just like they've got these average american lives right and then like they're they're putting on this whole edgelord persona right and like meanwhile here i am you know uh when i'm not astrally traveling i'm world traveling and uh i live this totally weird peripheral bohemian lifestyle you know like uh this this complete outcast of uh of the norms you know <laughs> but uh but there you go i guess like when you are when you've actually made it you don't have to put on the act you know like you don't have to go around pretending that you're like the the weird sinister sinister edgy you know borderline wizard or something <laughs> But you actually know enough about what you're doing and then you've uh you've gotten somewhere you know um so I think uh, the, the, obviously the reason that a lot of people are buying this is because it promises to teach you real magic. And there's people that just get either curious about that or think that it's, uh, you know, they, or, they're, or they're like, they want to see what it's about, right? Like they want to see what it's about either because they really want to believe in it or because they just find the idea so amusing, right? Um, or because they're already true believers and want to see what it is, right? There's a lot of, just like, you know, how in D&D, &D, there's people that even if they know a book is going to suck, they buy it because they have to have the complete collection, that kind of nerdiness, right? Well, there's that kind of nerdiness in the occult publishing scene too, right? So there's people who are going to buy this book just to, to, to have it, just to be complete about it, you know? Um, it's as annoying in that in that culture as it is in rpg culture for me because it means people buy crap products sometimes right um i i i don't know what else to say about the book of antithesis so i'll probably just kind of leave it there i don't think that um that is highly recommendable to almost anyone i mean i guess yeah i always try to figure out who would want to buy this book okay if you are either a teenager or a vastly superannuated teenager, right? Like you're still emotionally a teenager and you want to seem like cool and sinister. And you, you think that like satanic imagery oh, is super cool, you know, and that, that doing saying, put, you know, having stuff and publishing stuff and, you know, buying stuff and showing off stuff that is, uh, that, that is maybe going to offend little old ladies is super cool you know, and you want to show everybody how much of a badass you are in those categories, <laughs> then you might want to buy the book of antithesis. You know, if you want to actually get a product that is useful in an RPG campaign um, and that is going to be uh, it, not teach you how to do it, but teach you about how real life occultism works right it's they're not going to be able to do a single goddamn spell from buying the invisible college right but you will actually come out with probably a better education than a lot of chaos wizards have about what her magic about what real you know western magic is and how it works and how, what it's supposed to accomplish um so in in a way like this will be only a simulation you're not going to learn any real magic but in that simulation you will be able to have way more accuracy than whatever the hell this is you know also, if you're looking for a for an adventure, well, you can do the like super edgy, pregnant cannibal children uh, adventure in Book of Antitheses, or you could buy the old school companion too, um, which has adventures that are based on actual historical myth and legend, including a lot of which are stories about demons and sinister cults that are that are going to be more historically authentic than whatever the hell this is. <laughs> okay. So uh, that, that's my conclusion. I'm sorry to Jove. I hope he doesn't get too offended. But, uh, you know, uh, I kind of call it the way I see it, Job. And uh, I am i can't say I'm very impressed with the Book of Antithesis. I'm very sorry. Uh, but it seems a lot of it 
the the magic is kind of sophomoric and um the utility the the biggest crime of course because i mean the magic could be complete crap but if it was actually useful for your role playing experience either you know the dm part or the or the player part um then that would be forgivable like i, I wouldn't really matter right? i mean well yeah you you would be deceptive deceiving people by saying well this is going to make you like a real powerful magician or something like that when when a lot of it is just nonsense but it wouldn't be a big deal right now um the problem, here there are like a couple of things that maybe a person could get some inspiration from but but you could do it without the magic part too, right? So this isn't about magic. Like again, you're not making you're not making D and D better. You're just making occultism worse. I guess that's everything. Currently smoking, Mastro de Paya Rhodesian plus uh, Argento Raices. Uh, thank you very much.